Ventilation perfusion mismatch in lungs is one of the most common cause of hypoxemia in clinical condition. Hypoxemia when we talk hypoxemia is decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood. So let us see that what is ventilation perfusion ratio and how ventilation perfusion mismatch can cause hypoxemia. First of all you see total ventilation in the lungs it is how much? And uh, when we are talking about ventilation perfusion ratio, we are interested in the ventilation of the alveoli and not like the total ventilation which is occurring throughout the respiratory passages as well as the alveoli. So you see, suppose if the tidal volume is 500 ml, to calculate alveolar ventilation, we have to subtract the dead space volume from this. So normal dead space volume say suppose it is 150 ml and we have to multiply with the respiratory rate so let us assume respiratory rate to be 12 per minute now let us calculate how much will be the alveolar ventilation with this so it is 350 okay into 12 and how much it will come 12 5 is a 68 3 is a 36 4200 ml that is 4.2 liters so that is the alveolar ventilation and how much is the normal perfusion of the lungs normal perfusion of the lungs is the total cardiac output because the right ventricle is sending the full cardiac output to the lungs so perfusion is 5 liters so if we calculate ventilation perfusion ratio using this uh, total alveolar ventilation and total perfusion it comes to 4.2 divided by 5 that is 0 0.8 so that is the ventilation perfusion ratio of the whole lung but imagine a hypothetical condition in which uh, suppose these are two lungs and uh, what we imagine suppose that the whole ventilation is going to one lung say suppose there is a block in the bronchus here okay so whole ventilation is going to one lungs and whole perfusion is going to the other lung okay very hypothetical situation but just to understand the concept we are taking this example so here ventilation will be 4.2 liters and here the perfusion will be 5 liters now if we calculate the ventilation perfusion ratio still the value will be 0 0.8 but will it be any useful no no oxygen will be able to pass into the blood. Blood will simply flow from the lungs and reach, right? And here there is no blood. So it is not useful for the body. So it is very important that ventilation should match with the perfusion. Wherever ventilation is there, perfusion should be there. So when we talk about ventilation perfusion ratio, we are interested in the regional ventilation perfusion ratio of the lung. That is... In the various parts of the lung, what is the ventilation perfusion matching which is happening? So what is the difference in the lungs? Is it same everywhere or it varies? And what happens in some disease conditions? Well, actually in physiological conditions also, there is variation in the ventilation and perfusion from apex to base of the lung. So this is the base. First, let us see what is the variation in the ventilation. You see, ventilation is less at apex and more at base. Why is that? Well, ventilation when we are talking, we want that with each breath, how much is the change in the air in the lungs? With each breath, the air should go in and it should come out. So what happens that in normal state, due to the effect of the gravity, you see that the base of the lung is bit compressed okay base of the lung is compressed and uh, you see it is there is one pleural layer right so base of the lung is compressed and thus it creates some positive pressure here positive pressure i mean this is not actually a positive pressure this is relatively positive compared to that of the apex so intrapleural pressure here at the base is less negative less negative intrapleural pressure at the base compared to that of the apex of the lung and when we talk about the expansion of the alveoli we always talk about the compliance and what causes the expansion of the alveoli it is the difference between the intrapulmonary pressure okay intrapulmonary pressure minus intrapleural pressure now when 
this intrapleural pressure is less negative this difference between the intrapulmonary and intrapleural pressure is less at base so now it might have become very confusing let us see some numbers to understand this suppose at the apex, the intrapleural pressure is minus 5 millimeter mercury and at base, because of the gravity, it is less negative. So, suppose here it is minus 3 millimeter mercury. Okay. Now, the alveolar pressure, say suppose at equilibrium is 0 millimeter mercury. Okay. So, alveolar pressure is nothing but the intrapulmonary pressure. So, how much is the pressure difference? The pressure difference is plus 5 millimeter mercury. That is the distending pressure. That is the pressure which is trying to stretch the lungs okay so why it is plus 5 it is 0 minus minus 5 so it becomes plus 5 millimeter mercury on the other hand at base by the similar logic this distending pressure is only plus 3 millimeter mercury understanding so because of this more distending pressure at the apex the alveoli at the apex are kept more distended here at the base they will be little bit compressed state okay compressed it and here they are at distended state now that means that the alveoli at the apex can change from this distended state to the maximum distended state possible maybe this one and here the alveoli at the base can distend from this particular small size to the maximum size of this one correct and if you remember compliance remember that when the alveoli are almost fully distended it is very difficult to change their volume to the maximum size you see in the compliance graph in the end the graph is almost flat by the way i have another video in compliance you can check that out for details on lung compliance so i was talking about the change in the size of the alveoli or change in the volume of the alveoli which will be much difficult at the apex with each breath because the alveoli are already in distended state at the apex. So at apex ventilation is much less compared to that of the base okay that is with each breath. So don't think that at apex the alveoli are distended so volume of air is yes at all points of breath it is more but we want the change in the volume of the air so let us draw it graphically at apex the ventilation is lesser compared to that of the base okay so base i have drawn it more so this is the change in the ventilation from base to the apex we took only two points but gravity is acting throughout the lungs okay so the size of the alveoli at different points of the lung are different so that is about ventilation coming to perfusion again due to the effect of the gravity the perfusion at the base of the lung is much more and why is it so see perfusion depends on the hydrostatic pressure and hydrostatic pressure depends on the volume of the blood and the gravity okay so gravity will cause more hydrostatic pressure at the base of the lung compared to that of the apex of the lung so again at base perfusion is also more compared to that of the apex however if we see the variation we see the variation it is something like this okay perfusion is much more at the base this is perfusion line and it falls much steeply to the apex okay so this is the perfusion line which we are talking the variation in perfusion is much more from base to apex compared to that of the ventilation which is this is the ventilation line see if the fall was similar say suppose the fall was something like this right then you calculate the ventilation perfusion ratio it will be coming one everywhere but because of this steep fall ventilation perfusion ratio if we calculate it comes something like this okay so if we see at the base and here ventilation perfusion ratio is v by q ventilation is more but perfusion is much much more so you see the denominator is more in value and hence ventilation perfusion ratio is lesser apex what happens again ventilation perfusion ventilation is lesser but perfusion is much 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 lesser so compared to perfusion ventilation that is the numerator is more and that is why the ventilation perfusion ratio at the apex is much more 
and it here comes at approximately 3. So what is the point of all this thing? Well, as I told you before that it is the matching of ventilation and perfusion which is important. Here at the base, yes, ventilation is more but unnecessary extra blood is going which may not be needed. Okay. And here at the apex, ventilation is less and perfusion is much lesser. So whatever oxygen is coming into the apex, that is also not going into the blood because the perfusion is less. Now because of this physiological differences in the ventilation perfusion ratio, there are differences in the partial pressure of oxygen at apex and at the base. Let us see this concept a little bit in detail. So what is happening that uh, due to this difference in ventilation perfusion, physiologically also there are changes in the partial pressure of oxygen at apex and base. At apex, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is approximately 132 millimeter mercury while at the base it is approximately 89 millimeter mercury. Understanding? You see, if there is alveoli and there is a blood vessel, how much will be the partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli it depends on two things. One, that how much is coming in from outside right that is how much ventilation is occurring because that is bringing the atmospheric oxygen whose partial pressure will be 150 millimeter mercury okay and it also depends on how much of this is diffusing into the blood so after equilibrium we say that the total partial pressure of oxygen in blood is how much 100 millimeter mercury correct yeah but you see, if we see each alveoli in the lung, it is different. Here it is 132 millimeter mercury, much closer to that of the inspired air because ventilation is more, right? And diffusion into the blood is less because the blood flowing is less. Then here ventilation is lesser and whatever is there, it is diffusing into the blood. So here partial pressure of oxygen is less. But we say that alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is equivalent to that of the arterial partial pressure of oxygen. That is also we say that it is equal. It is 100 millimeter mercury. Yes, that is equal because that we are measuring in a different way. What we do, we ask the patient to exhale maximally and we collect the last bit of the air. So whatever air is coming from all the alveoli mixes up here in the tracheobronchial tree and we are collecting the mixed alveolar air. So we get a mix of air from all the alveoli. So then it is 100 millimeter mercury. But here what we are interested in the regional values. Understanding. So normally also there is difference in the partial pressure of oxygen from apex to base of the lung. However, physiologically it doesn't affect the oxygen content much in blood. Why so? You see, when the blood is coming from here, from the apex and getting mixed with the blood which is coming from the base, definitely there will be decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen. So, how much will be the partial pressure of oxygen in blood? It will not be a mean of this. It will, you cannot just add this and divide by 2. That cannot happen. Why? Because the blood flow here is less. So, contribution of oxygen which is coming from the apex is much less. And here... PO2 is much closer to than that of the partial pressure at the base. So that becomes 97 millimeter mercury. Okay. So now you see your oxygen dissociation curve. In oxygen dissociation curve, what we see? Like this is partial pressure of oxygen and this is percentage hemoglobin saturation. So by 60 millimeter mercury, hemoglobin is almost 90% saturated. Okay, 90% saturated and after that the curve is almost flat. So that is why at 97 millimeter mercury the oxygen content is not affected that much. Because even if the partial pressure of oxygen say suppose becomes 110 millimeter mercury, will there, there be much effect on the oxygen content? No, there will not be much effect. However, suppose this ventilation perfusion mismatch becomes exaggerated. That means, suppose there is a block in this blood vessel. What will happen? 
there will not be any contribution of this apical alveoli to the partial pressure of oxygen and what we will get after mixing the partial pressure of oxygen will be much lesser why because it will be the venous blood you see what is entering is the venous blood where partial pressure of oxygen is 40 millimeter mercury and this will mix when it will return it will mix with this and the partial pressure of oxygen will fall much much more so let's try to understand this ventilation perfusion mismatch so here in this graph we have shown three alveoli where you see this is the normal condition okay so partial pressure of oxygen here in this is 100 millimeter mercury all right and partial pressure of carbon dioxide here is 40 millimeter mercury that is after equilibrium has been attained with the alveoli so this is a normal condition now here this extreme condition shown where there is blockage of the blood vessel and what will be the partial pressure of oxygen in this case in the alveoli it will be equivalent to that of the incoming air because nothing is diffusing into the blood as i told you that partial pressure of alveolar oxygen depends on two things ventilation and then diffusion so here it will become equivalent to that of the inspired oxygen so it will become 150 millimeter mercury right 150 millimeter mercury so in this diagram we are talking about alveolar oxygen this is o2 co2 diagram which depicts alveolar partial pressure of oxygen in different levels of ventilation perfusion mismatch so here total block of blood vessel partial pressure becomes 150 millimeter mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide approximately zero that is equivalent to that in the normal condition inspired air is very less carbon dioxide so here we are taking it as zero millimeter mercury and this is known as physiological dead space because the ventilation is occurring but it is not taking part in gas exchange actually it is pathological named as physiological so this is contributing to dead space and in this condition second condition what we are showing that alveoli is blocked or there is collapse of the alveoli so in that case there will be zero ventilation understanding zero ventilation and the blood is simply moving through the alveoli without getting oxygenated so this is known as shunt okay this is a shunt and in this case how much will be the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen well it will be same as that of the mixed venous blood okay because they might have become equilibrium might have occurred so pao2 will be equivalent to 40 millimeter mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 45 millimeter mercury same as that of the mixed venous blood so here this is 40 millimeter of mercury is the partial pressure of oxygen okay so these are two extreme conditions but if we follow this line we get to know that how much will be the partial pressure of oxygen carbon dioxide at various degrees of ventilation perfusion mismatch okay let us see how it affects the partial pressure of oxygen in case of various clinical conditions which cause ventilation perfusion mismatch say suppose here there is PO2 of 132 millimeter mercury that we are taking normally and here PO2 is 89 millimeter mercury right so how much will be the alveolar PO2 alveolar PO2 again remember that we are taking the mixed alveolar partial pressure of oxygen so the person will exhale and the air from all the alveoli will come out right and it will mix so partial pressure of uh, exhaled oxygen will be somewhere in between say suppose it is 100 millimeter mercury after mixing okay and what will be the partial pressure of arterial oxygen in normal condition as we saw that it comes to 97 millimeter mercury so there is not much difference maybe 3 to 4 millimeter mercury difference is there between the alveolar and arterial oxygen and this difference is known as alveolar arterial gradient so that is written as PaO2 minus PaO2. Now suppose this blood flow is decreased. Okay. It is very less. So the blood which is returning from here, the partial pressure of oxygen from this blood will be 132 millimeter mercury. Right. 
but the amount of blood is very very less and the blood which is returning from here the amount of blood is quite a much compared to what is returning from here so the effect of this partial pressure on increasing this partial pressure of oxygen will be very very less right because the blood coming from the apical alveoli is quite less so maybe it reaches only to 90 91 mm mercury understanding now what will be the alveolar arterial gradient so here it will become 100 because alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is same so it is 100 however arterial is decreased so what we see there is increased alveolar arterial gradient of oxygen in case of hypoxemia due to vq mismatch similar is the case when ventilation is blocked let us see another example for that so suppose here is two alveoli right and uh, blood is flowing through them normally so if there is block here in the alveoli the blood returning from the apex what will be the po2 po2 will be like that of the mixed venous blood that is 40 mm mercury and while here even if it is getting oxygenated po2 will become only 89 mm mercury right 89 mm mercury and what will happen when these mix even the blood which is flowing from the apex is lesser but still it is going to decrease this partial pressure of, of oxygen to much lesser so again you see that this pa2 value is going to fall too much and then again there will be increase in the alveolar arterial gradient so hypoxemia due to vq mismatch increases this gradient however suppose there is another cause there is hypoventilation the person is not breathing itself the central respiratory drive is not there or the muscles are not working properly so the air going inside itself is less okay at the level of the lung the diffusion is occurring properly so in case of hypoventilation po2 will decrease right so it may become like 90 mm mercury but there will be a similar fall in arterial po2 so this may become 87 mm mercury so there is hypoxemia occurring due to hypoventilation also but there the alveolar arterial gradient is normal but that due to vq mismatch this gradient increases so that was about concepts on ventilation perfusion ratio and how in diseases it will lead to hypoxemia thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you